Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, and thank you to the participant uh, to this panel and especially for the people that uh, I contacted at the last moment. So double thanks, uh, because I had invited the two friends and colleagues uh, from the World Health Organization, uh, Deborah Kestel uh, from the director of the WHO Mental Health uh, Department uh, and Chris Brown uh, of the Department of Health uh, and Prosperity, but they, they had to drop out because they had a very urgent uh, task to organize another big conference. So they send uh, their hello and their regrets. So double thanks uh, to everybody that at the last moment they said, please, please, please. So I'm very proud of this panel and uh, they're really interesting uh, uh, people doing the field work. Uh, and many of them are my friends and colleagues uh, that are active uh, in one uh, educational experiment uh, that uh, we have created uh, after the brutal invasion of Ukraine. Uh, that is the, an education uh, effort to, to train a freely health professional in the trauma-informed uh, care best practice. Uh, others uh, are really part of that, uh, but uh, like uh, Vitali, are vice president uh, of the Ukrainian uh, Psychological Association, uh, or like uh, Mima or Maria Teresa uh, <laughs> uh, Siniscalco is uh, the new president uh, of the Italian Association of Teachers uh, and uh, of uh, uh, school principals. So very quickly, because the time, uh, the World Health Organization uh, in 86 uh, launched uh, the, the manifesto of the biopsychosocial approach uh, to protect uh, and promote health. And so underline the need uh, to abandon obsolete uh, mechanistic reductionistic vision uh, and not uh, see wrongly that uh, one is healthy if he's not ill. But the health, uh, the World Health Organization, uh, show that not only is the full development of human potentialities, if the environmental situation allow. So health. Uh, has to be defended, promoted in everyday life by all of us, the citizen, helped by the professional in the health field. And not only that, we cannot just concentrate on personal health that without seeing that the health is socially construed. So social health is an important determinant. But more than anything, if you read the Again, uh, very, you know, pren you know, very important uh, even today is that uh, the prerequisite uh, for health and well-being are peace. How not to underestimate that? There is not really healthy, not uh, helping well-being to have missile bombarding your apartment, people invading your country people raping your children. And not only health, peace, but also shelter to have a roof under your head. And third day, who sent education, food, income, stable ecosystem, sustainable resources, social justice and equity, equal opportunities in other gender equity, non-discrimination. So, the effective promotion of health and well-being is carried, the World Health Organization teach that, by action that are person and people-centered, action of empowerment. The same thing the United Nations says that there has to be in defending and promoting human security, people-centered action of empowerment. And the same thing is uh, about education. In Europe, uh, we have been uh, for more than a quarter of a century trying to reach uh, a knowledge society. 
Well, the Bologna process, as you well know. Well, the Bologna process they published a bulletin, one of the last bulletins say, we're not doing it good enough. We need to involve it to be more student-centered, to involve the students and be more active to design their curriculum. Not only that, to self-evaluate their accomplishment. We have tons of research and show what the Dewey long time ago at the end of the 1800s said, the problem with school, there are too many teachers and too few facilitators of learning. We need to uh, see things, uh, not education, human security, health. They are all the aspect of the same reality of us uh, in relation with other human beings, with uh, the universe in which we live, which is uh, full of, of living things. And we've been at war with each other, with ourselves often, and even with plants and animals. We badly need peace, and the school system it doesn't teach peace actively by behavior, not just by word. It will be, continue to be part of the problem and not of the solution. Now, let's hear the first uh, 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 panelist, uh, Professor Luca Rollet. Luca, please. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to everyone. Really happy to be here with you. Thank you, Alberto, for your introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here. And I say hello to everyone, also online, YouTube channel, and everywhere. Uh, I think there's a very important conference, this one, and listening to the talk of Alberto, immediately I wanted to change again my presentation, but I can't because seven minutes in seven minutes, so I will be very strict, and I will ask the help for Alberto to give me a sign if I go too long, and also I will much, use... much very, very organized. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the anxiety is coming up. Okay, I will run. Uh, I will use a PowerPoint presentation just to not talk too much, and I will share my text with you immediately. So thank you so much. Here we are. You should see in a sec. Okay, now you should see my PowerPoint presentation probably. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, I really wish to say again to you, Alberto, and you just already mentioned some words that are very close to me, and Alberto know that, is peace. Uh, when we talk about peace and we talk about education, we talk about the new generation, and we talk also about the opportunity to stay together and work together, uh, trying to, uh, to, to create uh, a, a world that can be inclusive, respectful, and also when we talk about respect and we talk about inclusion, we talk about diversity. And sometimes I better talk about peace. And peace is something that I do not recognize your diversity. You are different from me. And in this case, when you do diversity, it just uh, make my art explode. It doesn't give me the opportunity to continue to, to stay in our relation. When we talk about a relation that to be center person it means definitely to work one to one and one to many people to create more consciousness here we are uh, i really wish to introduce you in this project uh, that try to fight in some way some stigma discrimination and inequalities uh, against and minorities. In this case, I will talk to you very fast uh, in a very uh, about a sexual minority. So we are talking about LGBTQI people, and this is a European project founded by European Commission. In this case, when we talk about sexual minorities and we talk about the opportunity to be in care to the services, to the uh, social services, to the mental health system, we always we wish to be uh, um, to, 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 to go in, in, in some services and to be to receive respect but in some sometimes can happen something different we everyone knows that the free access to the healthcare is a fundamental civic right and following the article 35 of the European Charter for mental rights it said that everyone, have to be opportunity to assess and to have the benefits for the medical treatment under the conditions established by the national law and practices. 
everyone in, in our country, we know that sometimes uh, the mental uh, health system, but also the uh, health system care has some difficulties. But some, sometimes if you are a part of a minorities, you can suffer of a higher level of uh, problem discrimination or different condition. In this case, we can say that only to be yourself in uh, social services, in health services, you can just uh, be uh, in care in, in deep from the GP or from the doctors. And so understanding the individual differences can be critical to delivering care that best meet their needs. So we are talking about the self-determination, the self-identity. And so everyone had to be respect uh, from from he, 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 uh, how he is or how she is. In this case, sexual minorities faces a lot of difference and difficulties, not the only one that everyone meets every day, but also other types, because they are part of a sexual minority groups. In this case, we talk about discriminatory attitudes, uh, from GP, from um, midwifery, etc., or unequal treatments, or again, lack of recognition of need. Uh, we have seen a lot of research that has been published during the COVID 19 period uh, that just highlight the differences uh, from taking care from some type of cancer, uh, from mammal cancer from lesbian women and prostate cancer for uh, gay men that has been suffered higher level of these two types of cancer during the covenant period because they've been treated, treated again uh, and uh, different uh, relation with the health system. And then if you are part of uh, a minority, sometimes you, just, you can also uh, be think yourself and uh, have yourself as a fear of discussing gender identity or sexual orientation. And cases, a lot of cases all around the world has been reported where LGBTQI people are denied healthcare services because of their sexual orientation, gender identity, or sexual characteristic. And so just some numbers from the European Commission from the strategy 2020-2025, we have to keep in mind that 19% of lesbian and gay bisexual people, 35 of trans people, and 32 of intersex people felt discriminated against at work in the previous year. And this is a very high number of discrimination. But the 46 of LGBTI people are never open to medical staff or healthcare providers about being LGBTI. But if I do not tell you that I'm, I am a gay man or a lesbian woman, I cannot tell you a lot of myself. And again, the 21% of intersex and 48 of trans person and 35 of lesbian and 31 of gay men live in a household that have difficulties making ends meet. So what can we do? First of all, the 2020-2025 strategy suggests to fight discrimination toward LGBTQI people. Okay, I think that everyone agree about that. Safeguarding LGBTQI people, building respectful society, and guiding the fight for equality for LGBTQI people worldwide. How we try to fight this? Well, with our European One project. Minute, Luca. Thank you so much, Alberto. A coming from project from three countries with the aim to promote the value inclusion recognizing the physical and social factors, stimulate health initiative and policy, and establish equitable health care for LGBTI people. The target group, student, professional, staff that work in the health system, and the activities that we can produce, good practice diets that will be offered for free to everyone, micro-learning program, it is at education level, and inside massive open online courses with four modules, understanding the LGBTQI sense and terminology, app seeking process, you learn from each other, healthcare obstacles, legal framework and policy, initiative and method regarding transgender and intersex people. All this training program will be offered online for free, it will be in our website, it will be 20 from, from 20 to 40 hours of teaching online, 
uh, asynchron asynchronized, and so everyone can access from everywhere in the world. Will be in Italian, Greece, and English. Thank you so much, and so for your time. Thank you Just very much, Luca. You're going to have it. two, three minutes at the second round. And yes, now, thank you. Without interruption, uh, Francesca De Cagno, that is uh, one uh, of my colleagues, uh, a psychologist uh, specialized uh, in natural disasters. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And it's a pleasure and pride to be here today. I would like to share with, with you some uh, work experience in emergency field and uh, the contribution of the person-centered approach uh, to the development of specific emergency codes. So I'm going to share my presentation, very short, <laughs> like Alberto. <laughs> okay, can you see? Yeah. Okay. Yep. In the current scenario, in the historical moment, uh, emergency contexts are constantly increased from our recently experience of the global pandemic to road accidents, which are the leading causes of death in young people. From max emergency causes by climate upheavals, such as earthquakes and floods, and to the constant number of accidents at work. The critical incident uh, was defined any situation capable of exerting highly stressful impact on the individual, such as to destroy the mechanism and behavior normally used. After a critical incident, each person responds with different behavior and strategies. Some responses, called copy strategies, are more effective than others. We know that some factors are considered predictive of trauma. For instance, the intensity, the unexpectedness, the duration of the event. The effects can be seen on the biopsychosocial balance of the individual, but also of the community in which they live and work. Knowing how to intervene to following recognizing methodologies means entrancing people resilience to deal with live experience as well as uh, uh, will be in the individual, which in turn of positive repercussion on the social context in which they live. The emergency intervention methodology has many similar similarity with the uh, a person-centered approach, not only from the theoretical point of view, empathic listening, acceptance, which are the heart of the ACP intervention, is underlined by the emergency theory, but also in the methodology, be silence, reformulating, referring emotion, these are the key elements for both. Once we observe this common ground, we decided to create a training, a training course that could help acquire and develop skills and methodologies useful for training personal working in a number of settings. For example, on the front line in emergency or in health or psychological situation of trauma with family members of people directly involved in the critical event or with association work in prevention. The training deals with the management of trauma in a practical and experiential way, adapting different contexts. Emergency intervention, kids trauma uh, for working with children and trauma-informed care. It is structured in models that can be also taken individually and uh, is suitable for teacher, social workers, and who work in relationship-based context. Because as we have seen in the presentation of this scenario, it is common as professional to meet people who have been exposed to the traumatic events. Part of my work encompasses training in the public sector, such as with the firefighter or Red Cross worker, where the use of these skills has been crucial. Let me share an example of how they can be used. When a facilitating climate is created in the class, there is 
always a moment during the training when an individual starts to share a traumatic experience. At the moment, the strange silence descends upon the class, a space in which painful memories are activated. Through empathic contact, all the participants often come to in contact with their traumatic memories. As a facilitator, having the tools to contain and manage this precious moment for the participation has made me more effective in the work. We can predict when people will experience a moment of difficulty regarding their traumatic or painful experience. However, knowing how to relate and what to say makes me feel confident and more complete, like a professional. We are convinced that the training education in the emergency sector is fundamental. Can Roger say, everyone has within themselves their own resource that through a facilitated climate can be best expressed and developed. These principles are the basis of our approach on the pedagogy that we apply in the training. We believe that this is the most significant contribution in the educational terms that we can offer in responding to the challenge of our humanity is facing in building a society of peace and right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francesca. And a, a, a double thanks because you've been very very, very kind to be so strict with the time. Now, Giulio Amannato, that is a, a, I remember when he was one of the students uh, in my courses, uh, and nowadays uh, he's a, a full-fledged uh, psychologist, uh, but also he's a little genius uh, of uh, electronics uh, and gaming. Uh, and now, if uh, we find the uh, funds, uh, please gather uh, He's gonna build uh, in a team uh, some learning, you know, uh, apps uh, to gi given uh, freely around the world uh, on uh, uh, human security and uh, trauma informed care as prevention because uh, we need to be people centered and so young people use uh, uh, lead, you know iPhone. So let's uh, uh, that medium uh, be the message. Uh, Bring our message, Giulio, please. Yeah, thank you, Alberto, um, <laughs> for the very kind words. I'm, I'm super happy to be here, and I'm gonna share, share my screen. So, like, okay. Uh, how do you? Wait, do you do you see my screen? No? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, my intervention today is about person-centered video games. Uh, is uh, is actually I always like video games, and they have a lot of potential potentiality to be an educational tool for human security. So in general, we are currently working on, on a few projects. And uh, first of all, just a few information because like why it could be like really useful also to just spread information because like video game are vastly widespread medium nowadays. And according to the latest estimate, there is like more than 3 billion players in the world with an average age of 35 years. So like uh, quite young people as well play. So it can be, be good for like promoting and facilitating education. Uh, the most used um, uh, platform are mobile device, especially youths. Uh, where the 79% of uh, that group play using a mobile device. And also gender distribution gap is almost equal now, 45 uh, players are female and the latest uh, statistics actually, they say that is even closer. And uh, video games can also usually are a form of entertainment, but apart from uh, the recreational purpose, uh, some games called serious game, are actually made uh, with a different goal uh, that can be like uh, to educate or to do scientific, scientific research, to assess skill or for promoting healthy behavior. Uh, in particular, today we'll focus on digital game-based learning. That is a pedagogical approach uh, that basically mix like uh, 
the the traditional games or the entertainment part with a serious learning uh, approach. So it kind of combine the best of the two worlds. And uh, <clears throat> obviously, uh, digital game based learning is a student centered experience based learning approach that basically utilizes digital game as uh, its medium to achieve the results. And uh, as a video game in general is like kind of um, a powerful and uh, really vast medium in a way, it really depends on how um, the, the game is uh, designed and built. So, like uh, some uh, uh, key characteristics uh, have been. Uh, um, found to be effective uh, to promote actually uh, improve uh, in education. Uh, first of all, the game uh, it sounds quite funny, but like it should be entertainment, entertaining and fun because like some serious games sometimes are just uh, boring. And so that is not good for motivation. Uh, they should be also set in a fictional setting, but this uh, may vary. And they should give a high sense of control agency to the player. And they also the rules and the goal of the game should be clear and easy to understand. And uh, they should also provide a responsive feedback to the players so like they can actually see if they are going in the right direction. It can be score, it can be money, it can be uh, different things in the game, but it should be there should be like a feedback that the player can see constantly, basically. It's, they should also offer many choices, so like to empower the players to actually be creative or if possible to take all different uh, problems with different solutions. Uh, they should also provide social interaction that can be built in the game if it's an online game, but also like if the offline game is in the class, uh, they should like uh, uh, provide like interaction between the players. They should be accessible. And they should be like with progressive difficulties. So it's like they are not too hard at the beginning uh, and they are quite easy and then they step up in difficulties. Like this game actually was uh, Steam Health in 1994. That is the same year, if I'm correct, the human uh, security paradigm was first introduced. And this is not a good example actually because it was uh, too complicated and like too serious in a way, a too less of a game. Is a simulation of the American health system. It's quite complex, but it was like one of the first uh, uh, game to actually uh, go in that direction. Or, and uh, then, if uh, uh, those like uh, characteristics are in uh, are uh, put in, in action in the, the gameplay of the actual game, uh, it, it has been shown to be like the outcome to be more positive than uh, like non-game based learning. Uh, there are a lot of positive effects actually like uh, linked to digital games uh, based learning. Uh, some of the effects are in improving uh, self-esteem and autonomy and improving decision making and learning motivation because it activates more like intrinsic motivation and extrinsic, but like uh, uh, usually if it's a good game, like players want to play it because they have fun. Uh, they improve also when being, they can improve emotional growth, they can improve problem solving, collaboration between uh, students, uh, conceptual understanding, so like linking, linking together different uh, concepts, and also innovative, creative, and critical thinking. In this case, like Minecraft, for example, uh, the educational edition is. Uh, really good at achieving these results that are like, uh, you can explore a cell, you can explore a factory, you can interact with a factory, with a cell. And so you actually kind of see from inside and learn through doing. So, yeah. And uh, digital game uh, for, for learning could be possible to create a digital game actually. Uh, based on the seven type of insecurity identified by the human security paradigm, and also maybe with a research action approach, so like involving people also in the making of the game, uh, could be really effective to let players directly experience in a virtual world uh, the, the effect of insecurity and also help them uh, come up with a creative solution to the causes, uh, the root causes of the problems. So it could be really good to spread in a way like uh, what is human security and reach a lot of people and also like let them uh, learn through play and uh, also 
uh, apart from this project, now I don't, I didn't put in the slide because, like, I wanted to focus on human security. But we are also making, trying to make because we are looking for funding, but like uh, a game uh, uh, about trauma and trauma informed care, and uh, that can also be good for health promotion and uh, health education in general, and to inform about the best practice of uh, trauma informed care. And uh, this is it. I just wanted to be super brief. But, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the time and the attention. Thank you, Giulio, also for respecting uh, the time frame. Uh, now, Vitali, that is uh, also uh, a partner, uh, the Ukrainian Psychological Association, uh, a partner in the trauma informed care best practice. Uh, and uh, uh, He's, uh, he has two doctorate. He's a, a researcher in uh, Brussels. Uh, to you to say whatever you want, uh, and uh, you are uh, driving uh, where you, Vitaly. Hello, hello. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm driving from school to actually education, topic of our conference driving from school to home. Uh, so, uh, uh, I'm not sure that... Uh, you have the seven minutes. Uh, what you want to share? OK, thank you. Uh, so, uh, uh, while uh, thinking about the topic of the conference, uh, actually I understood that uh, there are quite uh, complex connections between uh, security, between, between education, and between mental health. And I'm going to share some uh, examples of, the conne of this connection and uh, impacts uh, on the, based on, uh, actually on Ukraine, on our experience in our country. Uh, first of all, it's absolutely obvious that uh, where if there is uh, no security, uh, it's very hard to provide uh, good, reliable education, and uh, it's very good, to, very hard to engage people, uh, students and pupils, uh, in education. And uh, uh, after the war is started, uh, there was a huge disruption in the education process, uh, but, but. Uh, what we see now, uh, we see now that uh, um, if uh, if schools are adaptive, if uh, parents are supportive to their children, uh, motivation or to be educated uh, retain, and uh, the educational process is uh, is the place. Uh, the modern use of these online approaches, uh, distance learning, uh, etc., provide huge opportunities, and now. In Ukraine, half of uh, most uh, of the school uh, work in the online uh, format. Uh, and those schools that are equipped with bomb shelters, they are uh, operating real uh, offline format. Uh, some of them operate double uh, because of the capacity of bomb shelters could be different. Uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, where, uh, if there is creativity, if there is a willingness, uh, education continue, even if the security is set. Uh, another issue, what I'm thinking about, uh, is about actually about uh, impact of education on mental health. It's obvious that education is one of the social determinants of mental health, and uh, you know the lack of education. Uh, uh, Bad for mental health. And, uh, the high level of education in country and um, people, the high level of mental health, uh, pupils, parents, everybody. But I'm thinking also about another. Uh, sometimes and I'm thinking it something it happened. Uh, and there is a uh, what we call bad education. Uh, education in which actually the mental health is under the threat. It's an uh, education uh, where people, uh, where pupils, uh, where students are um, overwhelmed, uh, underestimated, uh, 
um, developing actually uh, not uh, useful for life skills uh, regarding uh, overworking, uh, doing a huge amount of tasks at uh, the same uh, the very, the very small amount of time. Education system that's forced uh, to cheat on uh, and to, uh, to use different um, things that uh, actually undermine the idea of good education. Uh, 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 and actually, it also is the case of a lot of Ukrainians, unfortunately. Unfortunately, a uh, Ukrainian education system, a uh, school system, uh, is not very well equipped uh, to be trauma informed, to be sensitive toward mental health, uh, to be um, uh, these policies against suicide, against bullying, and other things. It's a huge uh, uh, area for development. Uh, another issue which uh, faces now uh, our students that are pupils, uh, children that are abroad, is that, that they are forced by parents to be educated in two schools at the same time, in Ukrainian schools online and uh, in a model school uh, in their host country. It's uh, for huge, for most of the new pupils, students, it's absolutely disastrous for their mental health. They're overwhelmed, they're anxious, they're depressed. Um, this is another, it's another issue with uh, which we should, uh, should deal. Another point which I'm thinking about is actually about impact of mental health on education. And I am thinking about impact of mental health of teachers on the, on the education process. And what we see now also in Ukraine, when teachers are depressed, uh, when teachers are anxious, when teachers are, don't know, uh, do not um, aware, do not, um, not aware, but don't know what, what happens in the future. Uh, it also uh, it can lead actually to very bad results. Uh, it can lead to absolutely disastrous in terms of education, in terms of mental health. So that's my point uh, that uh, these things are absolutely interconnected and we should be aware of them by we think about uh, enhancement, about development in mental health, education, and security altogether. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh and all the best for a free Ukraine. Now we have our last speaker, Dr. Maria Teresa Sinistralco, that is the new president of the Italian Association of Teachers and School Directors and expert of Invalsi, the Italian Institute for Evaluation of the School System. <laughs> Basically, it's two days ago that I asked uh, my friend uh, Mima to help me. And uh, I'm so glad that, that uh, people didn't come out uh, so we can have you. Come <laughs> Seven minutes, Mima. Thank you, Alberto. I'm honored to be here. And thank you to each of you who spoke because I learned so much. And it was so precious to listen to you. Uh, I will look at this topic from the perspective of the global competence that education should and can focus on uh, in order to, to look at health, not just as you said, as the lack of illness, Alberto, but to look at health as the uh, full development and actualization of our human potentiality. And so in order to have this, we need what has been called a globally conscious education. Conscious is the word that you also used, uh, Luca. Uh, uh, now, the international organization, United States, uh, the OECD, uh, the World Academy of Art and Sciences, I think that they have contributed in different ways to draw the lines of an education which is, um, which is globally conscious. So we can think of some documents we have for example, the UNESCO 1974 recommendation concerning education for international understanding, cooperation and uh, peace, uh, which was an important document because it called member states to uh, ensure that their, their education policies are guided by a global perspective and have a commitment to international solidarity. 
another, of course, the documents to, to which we all think now is the Agenda 2030 with the social development goal, uh, sustainable development goal, and in particular, uh, the goal for quality uh, education. And in this goal, target four, which states clearly that quality education is not limited to academic knowledge and skills, but includes learning to live together in a sustainable way. Now, what is difficult is to move from the statement of intent to reality. What you do, uh, what Francesca, you were talking, goes in that direction. And one of the uh, difficulties, for example, UNESCO, while trying to monitor uh, the progress towards uh, the goal 4.7, they examine more than 200 frameworks and uh, they anal analyzed the curriculum of 78 countries. And what they saw is that uh, the issues of global citizenship, sustainable development are addressed very differently from one culture to the other. And even the same terms have a different meaning. So in order to overcome these, these problems, the OECD, the Organization for Economical uh, Cooperation and Development, starting in 2015 to build a new uh, framework, a shared framework of what has been called global competence. So what is global competence according to this framework? It's done, uh, it's considered as a multidimensional construct uh, uh, with four dimension. Uh, the first is the ability to critically examine relevant local, uh, global and uh, cross-cultural issues. The second ability, um, very close to what you do, uh, is appreciate and understand the perspective of others. Uh, the third uh, dimension is the ability to engage in open and respectful interactions with others across cultures. And the fourth dimension is the ability to act responsibly for the well being of all and for sustainable development. Now, this framework has been endorsed by the 79 country which participate in the OECD PISA survey. And uh, it, what is important is that it became the basis for the first international survey on global competence. So lots of results. I'm just going to highlight a couple. Uh, the first is that um, contact with people from other countries with all the issues that they have is closely associated with young people interest in other cultures and with their awareness of global problems. So those who are in contact with people from other countries and cultures tend to be more curious, more open-minded, to understand others, and to be able to put aside prejudices. And this is very important because it contradicts the hypothesis that conflict comes from the interaction of people from different cultures. Contact brings understanding. Second result is that um, students' attitudes, that is the social emotional component of the global competence, are related to the cognitive dimension of global competence. So students who show more respect towards people of other culture, people with differences, as you said, Luca, um, have um, positive attitudes towards migrants, they also have greater knowledge of global issues. So like uh, gender equality, like migration, like global warming, like causes of poverty, hunger, malnutrition, like international conflicts, and like global health and pandemics. So um, not only, but they also have a greater ability to evaluate the consequences of actions. So um, third result, and I conclude this first round, is that learning opportunity in school do have a big impact on student attitudes. Students which are involved in learning opportunities and learning activities, which are focused the fact that we are living on a multicultural world, on a different world tend to have more positive attitudes towards people from other cultures than those who are not involved. This happens at one condition, but I think I'm running out of my seven minutes, so I stop here.
Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, our second round uh, is limited uh, to one minute each, uh, starting Luca, because uh, it's five minutes uh, total time we have uh, before closing. Luca. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I definitely agree with all the part that has been discussed from the colleagues, because I think that we only try to build a, a, a common, a safe space for education, a sustainability for education, and try to to touch, I would say, the emotion and also the relation each other. We can grow up with a peaceful country, with a peaceful words. And just in case that uh, you wish to have any information about the project that I mentioned before, please feel free to write me l.role at unito.it. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you, Francesca, Mimma, and Giulio. And Vitali, Thank you, Giulio. Luca. Francesca, you're next. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the effort that everyone is making to implement education in our sector uh, seems evident to me. And uh, I firmly believe in the power that human beings have in realizing themselves. If we unite, unite this potential, then a paradigm shift is truly really possible. Thank you. Giulio. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I agree. Well, first of all, thank you to all of you. But yeah, I, I agree. And I also find um, quite interesting no, that uh, we are all kind of going the same direction, but using different media, different uh, point of view, different. But like, I feel like that the direction is the same. And I think that is like really good also for like uh, promote change because like you kind of, I don't know, the feeling is like tackling the same problem from different angle but with the same aim. And I think that is like really also empowering because like in a way we are like all going in the same direction and every one of us is like going in that direction but being themselves. So I think that is like uh, super good. And uh, so yeah, thank you very much for having me and uh, for all your contribution. Thank you, Giulio. One minute, uh, Vitali. Uh, so uh, thank you for... And, uh, what I'm thinking now, I'm thinking uh, that uh, first, what we need, we need a huge, we need investments. We need huge investment in education. We, uh, we need huge investment on uh, mental health and uh, uh, in mental health, uh, in psychosocial support, in education, in trauma informed development of trauma informed schools, uh, etc. And also, second uh, thing, what I think is, I'm thinking about that we need uh, to believe and trust in human potential, and that we all can manage uh, to achieve all this task and, and accomplish very good education and mental health system globally. Thank you. Thank you, Vitali. Mima. there uh no, just just to finish the last result i think alberto you will like it is that the impact of learning activity on student attitudes depends on one factor i mean depends on many factors but also on one which is the teacher inner condition so on the consistency between what the teacher says and what she does and reveals to her behavior. So the teacher were, uh, the students were asked a number of questions and those who perceive that their teacher have attitudes of discrimination also tend to have less respect for people from other culture. And this means that the attitude and behavior of us as educator count more than we verbally say, uh, informing globally competent people, people that care for human health and human security. Finished. Very good point. Uh, actually, each of us that is a teacher knows very well that uh, what uh, we can teach uh, really is not uh, just a dry notion, but is uh, with example. And we need uh, to keep our mind open, but as well our heart uh, and belly. And uh, teach uh, by example, not preaching, uh, but uh, being. Uh, Walking your talk, as they say in the States. I want to thank you all that are really doing a tremendous field work 
And allow me to thank also institutions that uh, have created uh, this uh, trauma-informed care best practice project that, uh, by the way, you can donate uh, through the World Health Organization, uh, World Academy of Art and Science, uh, sorry, uh, if you go to human security, you find any uh, support uh, is uh, welcome. And so, who are the uh, institution? The first on Central Approach Institute, also said the IHP, the World Academy of Art and Science, uh, the World University Consortium, the Department of Psychology of the University of Torino, where Luca is a professor and also the new director of the Health Psychology Postgraduate Specialization, the University of Sustainability in Santa Fe, New Mexico, the World Sustainability Forum, the Black Sea University Nectar, uh, Network, uh, the Planet, uh, the Protect Our Planet Movement, uh, and the Psychological uh, Association of Ukraine, where Vitaly is uh, the vice president and is uh, also on the board of directors uh, of this. Uh, you know, we all work uh, free to uh, help it. First of all, Ukrainian, and we want uh, to, with the help of Torino University, train the trainers. But also, we accept uh, now the, the request uh, of uh, Syria and Turkey wasted by this terrible earthquake. And if you sustain us, we will give to anybody in needs through free training, free materials, because giving is actually the only way to become more rich and being part of the solution and not the problems. Thank you, everybody, and everybody that worked for peace. God bless.